With the measurements you've taken, pool volume, flow rate, and power demand, you can be confident you'll get the most efficient performance out of your pump. In this section, we'll use realized energy factor to compare three scenarios and identify the variable speed pump settings that provide the most significant energy and cost savings. The pool industry generally recommends that for residential pools, the entire volume of water in a pool should be filtered completely each day. With single speed pool pumps, one full turnover of the pool water will take between four to eight hours depending on the pool's volume, hydraulic resistance, and pump size. But as we've discussed, slowing the process decreases energy use because slower water velocity decreases resistance in the pipes. So with a variable speed pool pump, you can still get the benefits of high speed operation for pool cleaning, which is generally recommended for two hours per day to operate a pool sweep. However, to achieve the rest of the pool's turnover, we recommend lowering the speed and extending the filtration time to at least 10 to 12 hours, depending on pool size, for maximum energy efficiency. Please note that for small commercial pools, which typically use the same type of pool pump equipment as residential pools, water turnovers are regulated by local and state health codes that generally require the pool entire body of water to be turned over once every six to eight hours. Most of the principles and techniques in this training can be applied to save energy in the small commercial pool market, but be sure to check local regulations before making any equipment or settings changes. Let's look at an example of a 25,000 gallon residential pool. Say you operate the pump for two hours a day at 50 gallons per minute to run the hydraulic pool sweep. This translates to filtering 6,000 gallons of water during that time. 50 gallons per minute times two hours times 60 minutes per hour equals 6,000. This leaves 19,000 gallons of water to be filtered over the remaining 10 hours. So the recommended flow rate for those 10 hours would be 19,000 divided by 10 hours divided by 60 minutes per hour or 31.6 gallons per minute. And remember, you can only achieve this lower flow rate by using a variable speed pump or a multi-speed pump. A good rule of thumb for most pools is to operate the pump around 50 gallons per minute or less for two hours for cleaning mode say to run a hydraulic pool sweep if you have one, and around 30 gallons per minute or less for the remainder of the day to achieve one full turnover, which is typically between 10 to 12 hours depending on the size of the pool. Let's look at an example of how you would calculate the realized energy factor of a residential pool. Say you're changing out an old inefficient single speed pool pump for a variable speed pump. For simplicity, let's assume there is no need for high speed pumping for this pool. To calculate your energy savings, first you need to know the baseline. So before you do the retrofit, start by taking three measurements. Measure the pool volume, measure the flow rate by installing a flow meter, and measure the power demand. You measure the pool volume at 20,000 gallons, the flow rate at 60 gallons per minute, and the power demand at 2 kilowatts. You also observe that the pump is operating 5.5 hours per day. With these measurements, the realized energy factor is 60 gallons per minute times 60 minutes per hour divided by 1,000, which equals 3.6 thousand gallons per hour. When this is divided by 2 kilowatts, it equals a realized energy factor of 1.8 thousand gallons per kilowatt hour, or 1.8 gallons per watt hour. Next, calculate the turnover. That's 5.5 hours times 60 gallons per minute times 60 minutes per hour equals 20,000 gallons. You're now at one turnover. Now install your variable speed pump 
and choose a middle-of-the-road starting point setting, say about 2,200 RPM, and take the measurements again. Pool volume is 20,000 gallons, which is already known. Now the flow rate is 45 gallons per minute, and the power demand is 0.7 kilowatts. To get one turnover, you would then need to operate the pump for about seven and a half hours. The realized energy factor would be calculated as 45 gallons per minute times 60 minutes per hour divided by 1,000. This equals 2.7 thousand gallons per hour. Divide that by 0.7 kilowatts. This gives us a realized energy factor of 3.9 thousand gallons per kilowatt hour. You've increased the energy factor from 1.8 to 3.9. But you know you can still do better since you're shooting for 30 gallons per minute. You know you can turn the pump speed down further to roughly 1400 RPM and extend the pumping time to achieve one turnover. So now one turnover requires operating the pump for 11 hours where 20,000 gallons divided by 11 hours divided by 60 minutes per hour equals 30 gallons per minute. Taking the measurements again, pool volume is 20,000 gallons, already known, flow rate is 30 gallons per minute, and power demand is 0.25 kilowatts. So, 30 gallons per minute times 60 divided by 1,000 equals 1 1.8 thousand gallons per hour. Divide that by 0.25 kilowatts gives us a realized energy factor of 7.2 thousand gallons per kilowatt hour. That's a huge improvement from the original 1.8 thousand gallons per kilowatt hour. That's like going from a car that gets 12 miles per gallon to one that gets 48 miles per gallon. And because you have all day, there is no rush to get to your destination. Just be aware that every pool is unique and the flow, power demand, and energy factors will vary at different RPM and will also vary depending on the pool's hydraulic resistance, which is why taking measurements at each pool is so important. If we compare these three separate scenarios that achieve the same amount of filtration but for significantly different amounts of energy, we see that taking measurements matters and you can realize savings of 75% from the baseline single-speed pool pump. The original pool pump would cost $3.30 per day, and the tuned variable speed pump would cost roughly $0.83 cents per day. Take a minute to answer a few questions and check your understanding of key points, then we'll move ahead to the module summary.